Hi, thanks for tuning into this short video entitled In-House or Outsource. In this video, we'll explore the factors to consider when determining whether you should perform DO-254 work in-house or whether to outsource it. It's based on the paper, uh, the white paper entitled In-House or Outsource, What's the Right Choice for DO-254 Projects? And my name is Michelle Lang. As more and more companies are finding themselves facing DO-254 requirements, one of the first things that they typically ask themselves is, how much is this going to cost? Uh, we explored this in another video session, um, looking at the effort and cost of a DO-254 program. But sometimes a better question to ask is, how can we deliver on this program most effectively? You know, many companies just assume that they should do the work in-house, and sometimes that is the most cost-effective approach but sometimes it isn't. Over the next few slides, we're going to be looking at what the factors are to consider when making this really important decision. First of all, DO 254 isn't simple. Uh, really, it's those companies who are not dedicated exclusively to the DO 254 market or who don't have it as a primary portion of their business who find it difficult. And why is this? There is really a number of reasons. The first is that understanding DO 254 compliance is pretty complicated. It's not as simple as reading a single document. There's really multiple layers of policy that, that build on each other, and interpreting all of this is, is, you know, it's tricky. So over the last eight years since DO 254 has been invoked, it's sort of been a moving target of trying to figure out what complying with DO 254 really means. It can take lots of trainings, multiple programs, and years of experience with lots of painful learning along the way to really claim any sort of DO-254 expertise. So the learning curve is really quite high. Um, and this really goes beyond the just the cost and time of training. First programs are notoriously expensive and painful. Uh, the good news is, is that successive programs tend to get less and less difficult. But a company really should be prepared for you know, the, the pain and the learning curve of that first program um, as they begin to ramp up their own internal DO-254 expertise. Mindset is another thing to consider. DO-254 really takes a certain mindset. It's almost like a special sort of culture. This culture values discipline and structure over freedom and creativity. And it isn't for everyone. In fact, lots of engineers really struggle with this. They often take, you know, take shortcuts because they think a lot of the work is boring or unnecessary. And these sorts of shortcuts can really come back to hurt a program or haunt a program in the later stages. It can often mean rework. Um, developing and acquiring in-house knowledge is, is also uh, a, an important factor. It's, it's difficult and it's expensive. Uh, once DO-254 engineers you know, start getting some expertise, they become quite valuable. And it can be really hard to keep these people on board, and their wages tend to go up accordingly. And it, and it can be wasteful to keep these people on at your firm if you're not keeping them busy full time. In other words, it's best to keep a dedicated team of experts busy, busy doing DO-254 related work pretty much full time. If you can't, you're likely to lose them. You know, this, this ties into you know, not just building your team, but managing and maintaining those, those you know, resources with expertise is, is really difficult. Um, the, the resources are expensive. If you can't keep them busy, they're going to leave. So um, you know, consider this, even if you're developing a group in-house, consider it a service business. And service businesses, are, you know, are, they're tricky. They're tricky to manage and maintain the appropriate level of resources as jobs come and go. Uh, relationships are also really important. So industry relationships, you know, sort of a, building an ecosystem of suppliers and certification authorities is really helpful in maintaining a strong DO-254 business and presence in the industry. And these sorts of things can take a long time to cultivate. But once established, these contacts can really help drive business through word of mouth and industry talk. Um, onshore development may be required. So in many cases, uh, customers, your customers, may prefer or even require development to be done in their home country. So this can limit some of the market potential for a company uh, if it isn't located in a country with a strong aerospace presence. 
Uh, tool sets are another uh, aspect of DO254 programs. So DO254 processes require certain types of activities to be done, and these activities are done by certain types of tools. Um, things like process management, requirements management, code checking, um, code coverage, clock domain crossing, those sorts of things. These might not be tools that you typically have on hand. Um, and they can be fairly expensive. For example, I know of a CDC tool that costs over $100,000. And this is a type of tool that's used very sporadically. So if you don't have lots of ongoing projects where you can use that tool, um, that cost can be you know, a, a bit prohibitive. So tools can require a substantial upfront investment. Um, also, uh, good relationships with DERs are important. So DO254 compliance can be audited, monitored, and accepted by FAA personnel. But most typically, it's done by what they call their designees or their designated engineering reps or DERs. Now, these folks command you know, fairly high wages, somewhere maybe around $200 an hour to come in and you know, monitor your program, to review your, your processes, your plans, and all of the artifacts from your program. Uh, a typical program can cost you know, somewhere between $30,000 and $40,000 plus two to five trips, you know, the expenses for those. So the the deal here is that this expense is very high for initial programs, but, you know, if you start working with the same DER and they become familiar with your processes and they become more confident in your expertise and, and the way you, you know, the way that you comply with your programs, um, the, you know, the cost can just naturally go down over time. So if your company supports, already supports, a dedicated DO254 group, or if you have sufficient well-trained resources, basically you're done. The choice is easy. Obviously, in-house makes sense. Um, but otherwise, if you don't have the luxury of this, you, you need to make a determination as to what is the most cost-effective cost approach for you. And to do this, you might want to ask a couple of questions. First, you know, do you know how much it will cost you to do the project yourself? Um, a lot of companies have, you know, kind of historical data that they can use. If this is a first DO254 project for you, you might want to um, get a hold of the DO254 effort white paper that's available from Logis Logis Circuit. Um, in that paper, we talk about, you know, the various factors that that influence cost and effort of a program, and from that, you can probably create a rough estimate of what the program would cost you to do in house, and then you can compare this with quotes you get from service providers. Another really important question, probably the most important question actually, is do you see the majority of your future work having DO254 requirements? Uh, if the answer to this is no, then it's actually probably cheaper to outsource the work. If you do decide, decide to outsource, if this you know, turns out to be the most cost-effective decision for you, then you still have a bunch of other considerations in choosing a supplier. Um, first, you probably need to determine whether you want to use a company that's onshore or offshore. If you, if you have ITAR or other sort of military requirements, you might not have a choice. You might need to choose a company in your own country. Um, but if you don't have these requirements and you do choose to offshore the work, you know, ensure that language barriers and time zones won't hinder your project success. Also, consider the stability of the offshoring destination. You know, some really some places with great engineering resource are politically unstable, so you might not want to get involved in places like that. Um, also, some instability might be inherent to a company or actually an economy itself. In some of the fast-growing high-tech service economies, employees jump from job to job really quickly to build a resume and command higher salaries. And this can lead to really unstable design teams. You know, sort of a, a revolving door of resources can be dis d assigned to your project. Um, you know, stability is really key for DO254 programs, uh, and a revolving door of resources is probably not the best. So, you know, really consider these things when you're determining, um, you know, if you want to offshore your program. Um, and if you do decide to offshore, then the, the next set of uh, factors are even more important. So the next factor to consider is a uh, company experience and reputation. And this is probably the most important factor. Experience means knowledge in this business and knowledge means reduced cost and reduced risk. So check around, see what people are saying about the company and don't be afraid to ask the company what sorts of projects they've done in the past. 
uh, business models and the flexibility of those business models is really important. You, you really want to explore how you can work with the firm. Understand, you know, what services do they offer and how do they charge for these services? You know, how do they bill? Is it by the hour or by the project? Does their work include the use of tools? You know, are there risks of the project costs that they've quoted you increasing? You know, how flexible are they in working with you? Maybe you plan in the future to do DO254 work and you want to work with a service firm kind of hand in hand so that they can kind of train you uh, to take on the work yourself in the future. Are they willing to do this? So these are all sorts of things to consider. Uh, communication is really, really important. It's really key to DO254 programs. It's very similar to the situation of interface requirements in a design program. Consider that the interfaces between software and hardware, or maybe software, hardware items, and systems, uh, you know, kind of those can tend to be the weakest link in a program. Um, they can be some of the trickiest and most error-prone error requirements uh, because it involves interfacing and communication between teams. Now, you might think that's not so important if you outsource an entire program, you know, if you hire a company to do a turnkey program for you. But honestly, communication is still essential. There'll be things like requirements reviews, you know, system and safety discussions, target testing, and other aspects of the program that will all link that services firm back to you, your company, and your program. So ensure that you're really comfortable in communicating with the firm, that you understand all the communication points, procedures, and methods. Okay? And finally, uh, last but not least is cost. You know, this whole thing is about cost effectiveness. So understanding the cost is, is really, really important. But it isn't the number one decision. After all, sometimes lower cost um, or what appears to be lower cost might mean higher risk. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Um, it's important to understand what's going into the price and the firm's business models that we've talked about before. You know, make sure that you have a clear statement of work or a clear proposal that identifies the tasks, the very specific tasks and activities that the firm will perform for you. And then the schedule and the price associated with all this. If they're unable to provide this, you know, that could be a red flag. They might not have the experience to do this. Um, so this is something, you know, make, make sure that you know what you're getting, that it's detailed and documented and, um, you know, that there's no risk in the cost that you think you're going to pay for the program. So as a quick summary here, instead of asking how much a DO254 program, DO program will cost, it might be important to first ask what's the most cost-effective model for your program. Um, determine if you have or can afford to develop and maintain internal expertise. If you have this, great. You're, you're one of the, you know, the lucky ones. If not, weigh the factors we presented here in this, in this uh, slideshow and determine the right choice for you. Uh, if you want a little bit more information, you can go to logicircuit.com. In, in our resources area, we have a white paper that this presentation was ba based on called Outsource or In-House, What's the Right Choice for DO254 Projects? And we also have another paper called Estimating the Effort and Cost of a DO254 Program that might help you in that starting point to determine what it might cost you to do the work in-house. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. My name is Michelle Lang. Michelle underscore Lang at logicircuit.com. Thanks.